Hello, my name is Jeremy Williams, representing Garden City Ammonia Program, and today we've got a very special guest with us. Not only a guest, he's a good friend of mine and a long colleague, and he was my very first instructor I ever had in industrial refrigeration, going back over 20 years now. Uh, so Dallas Babcock, our lead, tra our lead trainer, lead instructor here, and uh, we're going to have today's video podcast talking about his background, his career, what he does in industrial refrigeration. I'm just going to ask him a few questions. So Dallas, welcome to the show. Well, thanks, Jeremy. Uh, it kind of dated me there. We talked about 20 years ago. You got some of that gray hair right, right now, you know? know? It's getting pretty heavy. That's the year. Yeah, so what's your background? How did you get into refrigeration? Which um, background? Country boy from Western Kansas, so I uh, spent a lot of time as a millwright growing up. And, uh, you know, the millwright's kind of a jack of all trades. You work on whatever you need to. So I got real heavy into maintenance that way and ended up in a beef packing plant. And one of the things you find is there's a lot of need for refrigeration people. So that's kind of how I got there. Natural. So when you started the beef plant, did they just start you off as general maintenance, production yeah. maintenance? Yeah, I was kill floor mechanic. So how did you persuade yourself or get into industrial refrigeration? Because generally people just don't wake up and say, hey, I'm going to be a refrigeration tech. You that, know? Yeah, that's that's one of the reasons why we're so, so short-handed is you know, nobody goes, everybody wants to be a fireman, an astronaut or whatever, nobody thinks about money or refrigeration. But, uh, mostly I got into it because it... It would seem like a more technical job, and you know, I've, I've always had the the desire to learn, and, and it was, you know, it was kind of along the same lines. It, it was a part of the maintenance division, but they were more technical, and they spent more time working with, you know, uh, more expensive equipment or more technical equipment, and that just kind of piqued my interest, and so that's what kind of drove me in that direction. In a packing plant, if you show motivation, in a lot of packing plants, if you show motivation, then you have a tendency to advance because they don't get a lot of that. You know, they're not always the uh, best paying job, so they don't have, you know, get the, the most motivated people. So if you show a desire in a packing plant, then you can usually take that wherever you want to. So that's kind of how I got into refrigeration. Yes, sir. You know, going into a class in 2001 called Ammonia Operator One, I was an 18-year-old kid. I thought I knew everything about refrigeration. This man right here humbled me, and it's been neat to be able to work along him the last three years and try to develop more of what we call GCAT. Uh, definitely, if you're my age or older, you know who Dallas Babcock is. Uh, he represented the college for 20 years. Uh, he was the name and the face of industrial training, and we're so grateful for him to be part of our team today. Leading, leading the, the push of what we have for industrial refrigeration training. So thanks for being part of us. And, uh, Overjoyed to be here. Yeah. Where I should have been all along. So what do you think of the new engineer behind this man? Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's as effective and efficient as it is beautiful. It's the diamond plating and the new floor is great, but the Icon compressors are, are a real step up and uh, it's been a joy to operate the system. Yeah, we're filming live here, so you guys might hear a check dog rattling every now and then. So ammonia's moving, it's 10 degrees outside, and basically it's uh, making its way back to the receivers, but nevertheless, I have one important question for you, I guess, Dallas, and uh, I always want to have an educational part of anything that we do. Um, so what is the most important thing you think right now the industry needs for new maintenance mechanics, new technicians, New people coming into a money refrigeration. What's the one thing you wish you had 30 years ago that would maybe still be something that is needed today as they pursue industrial refrigeration? I think that's kind of a two-pronged problem. Uh, as far as the individual themselves go, the biggest thing they need is just the desire to learn, the motivation to, to take themselves forward because nobody's going to drag them up ahead, so you've got to push yourself. But as far as the industry itself needs, you know, like most industries, we've got a lot of the baby boomers and the old timers retiring and moving on, and we don't have the young people coming in that we need. We're not gonna be able to pick them up or steal them completely, you know, we steal them from other industries and everything, but we're not gonna be able to, to sufficiently fill our needs that way we're going to have to start designing more and more programs to make our own operators, give the people the opportunity. 
and get the word out there. You know, it's like you said, not everybody, you know, nobody grows up thinking, well, I want to be a refrigeration operator when I grow up. We got to give them that option to get more people coming into our industry. Well, you know, that puts out a good thing right here. There's a website that uh, is a great sponsor of GCAP. It's dreamcareer101.com. It's all about blue collar jobs, whether it's industrial refrigeration, electricians, mechanics, steam, boilers, wastewater, etc. Uh, that's dreamcareer101.com. And uh, you're a retired military Marine, correct? Uh, something that we do at GCAP. Uh, he's a veteran, and thank you for your services. Anybody that's not currently in the field that is a veteran of our U.S. military, uh, GCAP will put a full scholarship for Ammonia 1 or Boiler 1. There's some rules to this. They can't currently be in the field, etc. But just to be frank, you know, we give out about 30, 40 vets a year full ride scholarships to get their feet into the field and trying to transition them essentially from what we've called the military life to civilian life. So I want to thank you for taking some time this morning coming out of your lectures and the Op2 class that's going on and uh, kind of giving us your background and letting the industry know. And uh, I agree with you. I think that we're definitely going to be short staffed and not just the money for duration from plumbers to electricians. We're going to have to find the talent. These people are going to have to want to get out of the basement, want to work and show up on time. And I think that if somebody has a mechanical background or an analytical gift or a combination of both, I think they could be well suited in this field, both operations, maintenance, or maybe a combination of each one of them. And if some of you are looking, you know, for scholarships or just training, check out some of the free stuff we have on all the websites that are out there. Uh, but uh, thank you for coming to the show today, Dallas. And um, we'll have you on again at another time. Thank you, man. Appreciate it.